Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Excited. Yeah, so we're, um, so we're going to get straight into some questions yeah. uh, from the fans. Let's um, start by talking about casting and some of uh, the, you know, the famous names in the film. You've got Richard E. Grant, you've got Sarah Lancashire. Um, how did, did you always have your sights set on those people? Yeah, you did. In, honest, in all honesty, yes. Yeah. I, I, I feel I got the cast that I wanted, mm. which is amazing, you know. To, I, and I think what's amazing about it is that they wanted to be part of this story. They, you know, I, we went out, we asked them if they would be, you know, our dream was to get them to be part of this story. And I think the power of the story brought them to the project and I'm so grateful for them coming through it. And they took on the roles amazingly, you know. They uh, uh, amazingly, yeah. But then we had, you know, we, we had, you know, Sharon and, and Sarah and Richard and Adil and Shobna, yeah. you know, and then we had these people who had never done anything yeah. before including Max and Lauren you know it was it was extraordinary yeah it's nice to have you. that blend and did, and did it come out how you how you hoped it would when you saw those faces playing those roles originally did is that the outcome you expected and more yeah <laughs> that's what that's good they all did so well so in the movie there's a very short clip where we see an insight of Dean and his home life and his yeah. story was there an intention behind that did you want the audiences to kind of think into maybe that's why Dean is considered the bully because of his home life what was the theory behind that that we all have a we all have stories that we don't we don't reveal or don't get told or you know and we had a very short moment to be able to tell that story mm. and I didn't want Dean to be written off as two dimensional you know and you know everybody keeps calling Dean the bully and I don't call Dean the bully I call him a dick you know, <laughs> as, as 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 pretty says you know you know he's only a small one yeah. <laughs> but I do because. I've known proper bullies in my life, and Dean ain't one of them. Dean's rather, uh, in the best sense, it's, uh, not a great word, but pathetic in that sense, you know. He's, it comes from a, a closed, small-minded little place that he's in. And I think that comes from a bit of insecurity, a bit of fear. And that's not to excuse any part of his behaviour. I'm not excusing his behaviour at all. But... We all have complex lives. We all have, and, and, and actually, sometimes in this story, Jamie's a dick, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and can be a dick. We all capable of being it, you know. And what's, I think, hopeful is that Dean makes a shift, and that's the most important thing. Absolutely. And do you think kids watching this who maybe unfortunately are going through similar experiences of having a school bully, do you think they'll look at this with a different perspective now? Going, maybe there's a reason behind that. Maybe they're not so bad, or. What do you yes, think? I would hope so, but that's not to forgive their behaviour. Of course. Do you know what I mean? So it's to make sure that, one, you know that their actions are wrong and should be, should be challenged. And don't necessarily have to challenge by you. They can be, should be challenged by the people surrounding you because it's important that you, you find safe space to be joyful. That's the story, the message of this film. You know, Not that I wanted the message, but I believe that's, that's at the heart of it is, is find your joy. You know? And anybody who's is experiencing that, you know. And if I'm being brutally honest, I've experienced that myself in my own life, you know. And I do remember, and maybe this, this is part of it, I remember at one stage looking at those people and shifting something in my head that went, you're frightened of me. There's something, but there's something that, that brings up, there's something in me that brings up some stuff in you that you're scared of. So you attack me because you're frightened of it. And I, I had that shift in my head and I just remember, and this is only personal to me, this is not me telling anybody how to be at all. I remember going, I'm gonna forgive them instantly in my own head. And it released me. It just released me from their oppression. It shifted me into a new place and I went, okay. And I've, I've dealt with it in my own little way, you know. And, you know, I came from a time that sometimes you had to physically fight, you know, because mm. that's what you did. I learned to scrap, not that I approve of it, you know, but <laughs> you, you, you find your way, you know. But I, I think the most important message of this is that we create safe space in which people can have joy and express their joy no matter how they express it. Absolutely. So you've not long returned from the US press tour. How was that? How was Nakari? <laughs> yeah, but was the story received well over there? You know, amazingly. Yeah. You know, and it, it, we we met many audiences. We did Q and A's with with screenings across the country. We did seven states. We met 
many people like you, you know, we, we one-to-one -one interviews. And you know, not, well, not one mention of, not really, what, not one mention of Britain, Sheffield, as though it was anywhere distinct from where they were coming yeah. from. They saw it as theirs. They, oh, they, were, they didn't come and going, oh, this feels very British and it's very different from us. They came in going, this is my story. I, I, I identify with this. And that was just beautiful because it comes from Parsons Cross Council Estate. You <laughs> the know, community is it, everywhere. It's community is everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And there were a few changes as well. You know, you've got references to Bianca Del Rio and mm -hmm. pre-breakdown Britney <laughs> and all of those. Was there a kind of reasoning behind that? Was it so it was so globally understood? I wanted it globally understood. Really, I wanted some references that are so deeply Sheffield, you know, that I didn't want to take Sheffield away from it. And I don't, and I don't feel Sheffield is stripped away from this film whatsoever. It feels very Sheffield to me. I just didn't want anybody to get confused, you know, and they need when they need me, you know. Mm, absolutely. So do you think the movie would have had a different outcome had a different creative team been a part of it? Obviously, we know that you have been there for such a long time, since the beginning. Do you think if someone had come on board at a later moment, it would have been a different story? Uh, there was never a question of that happening. Uh, I would say, of course, because a different storyteller is going to tell a story in a different way. Of, that would be inevitable, but if, if somebody else took it. Um, and this, this term, creative team, I kind of struggle with a little bit because it makes it small and the creative team is massive. Yeah. The creative team is everybody because everybody puts their creative energy into it. it it's enormous. So it isn't this little small group of people that make something and everybody follows. It's an enormous group of people that all bring their creative energy together. So of course it would be different if somebody else told the story. But I would hope the essence of the story is so strong and so clear that the, it would, it's it, Jamie Campbell's story mm. is what's at the centre of it. It's his courage, it's his joy, it's his fabulousness. And I hope that would always resonate no matter who told it. So let's talk about the fan base. Why is the fan base for this project specifically so important? And what do you hope their, our reaction is to the film now it's going to be released into the world? You know, Fans is a, is, a, is, a, is a wonderful thing because what, what a fan does is goes, this belongs to me, I own it, you know, and particularly I, I feel that sense of ownership and going, this feels, this story feels so precious to me, I want to own it, claim it, make it mine, share it with other people, bring a group of community together and celebrate it together. I think that's at the very heart of this story. So what the fans do is create another sense of community. And I hope they, in turn, get to express their joy and, and particularly everybody express their uniqueness. Because as a group of fans, you're all different as mm. well. And you all have different voices and different ways of seeing things. But I think at the centre of this story is joy and that's what we need to preserve, is everybody's singularity of joy. And you've given us that platform to be able to express that and enjoy that. So I've you. shared in that. I haven't yeah. given it you, I promise you. It's been given you, one, by Jamie Campbell and Margaret, because that's where it came from. And it's been given you by thousands and thousands, as you see, yes. yeah. of people. So I'm part of that, and yeah. I appreciate that, and I I'm love being part of that. But not just me, it's thousands of people who share it. Absolutely, and like you said, the the street party. We were both there. It what was, a day! Was day. What a day! It was amazing. The sense of community, again, to use that word, was just outstanding. Everyone was there for a purpose to tell this story, to be a part of it, and together. celebrate it, Absolutely. and totally so. And you know, my auntie Joan lived on Dylan's Avenue. Yeah. That's where she lived. You know, and that's why I would visit very often. I've got goosebumps. Now. Yeah. Uh, and to see that street be filled. In, you know, that community sometimes is given a hard time just for where it is and what and, and how it's seen. And I know that community to be proud of who they are and what they are and celebrate what they are. And to see that and to be in that day was just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so grateful you were there. It was amazing. So lastly, yeah. quickly, um, what's next for Jamie? What's kind of in the pipeline? We know you've mentioned school productions. Yesterday at the premiere, there was a very brief discussion about a possible sequel. <laughs> what, what do you think is going to happen? What's the future? 
Jamie on Friday is to go into 240 territories across the world. Yeah. I don't, that energy going out, I don't know what's going to happen with that <laughs> energy. It's going to do its thing. As it, Jamie has a life of its own, that's going to happen. In, in Notre Dame School in Sheffield, they started rehearsal last week, literally on Friday, to do their school production of it. It's got a life of its own, and it should have a life of its own. And it will have a life of its own beyond me, beyond Dan, beyond Tam, beyond all these people, you know. It will do its thing in the world. I don't know where it's going. I will be there, loving it, holding it, supporting it, cheering it all the way. As will we, of course. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you Thank so you for much, Johnny. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.